got a quick tale here for you about uh, this RV. We just bought this RV used. It's a 2017 model, but all the dates on it were 2015, so probably made in 2015 or 2016. I think it was made in 2016. Anyways, so I took, I decided to do a brake job, right? I wanted to, I'm the type of guy, I got to take things apart and make sure that they're right, you know, before <laughs> you go on the road. And so I took this first left front brake off, and it's pretty grooved in there. Um, and I got to say, I noticed when I was driving it home, it's only been driven home from where I bought it from. And uh, as I was driving it, the brakes hardly felt like they were working. So I was like, oh, I got to look into that, and I want to make sure the bearings are still good and blah, blah, blah. So me being me, the, the guy that owned it before supposedly had it uh, all the brakes um, checked every year. He said they were checked every year. All right. Well, if they were checked every year, first of all, the grooves that are in this drum here are really bad. I got to take this drum in and have it turned. The pads were marginal. They were okay, I guess. But they said they only use this thing for like 30 nights. and So I can only imagine it's only... And they stayed right in this area, too. They only went... We're in Atlanta. They only took it down to Florida once and up to South Carolina a time or two. And, I mean, it hasn't had that much use in that amount of time all right so i was thinking to myself well you're an idiot for doing all this uh this break didn't look that bad i mean it was it was bad but i was like well do i really need to do all the rest of them well i put an automatic adjusting brake in here this is getting turned uh tomorrow and i was like oh boy i was really on the fence do i check them all or do i not uh-huh well guess what i did them on all anyways because i'm the captain overkill and look at that, the seal is blown out in that one. And it's absolutely smooth and wet in there. There's what the brake pads look like in there. Those were probably barely working, right? Because you got grease on the front of the pads. That's not gonna be a very effective brake, right? All right, so that was one out of two that the seal had failed in. And then, of course, you go to the other side. Sorry, that was the door slamming shut as I went by and hit it with my arm. Go to the other side. Took this one off. Look at that. Blown seal. Wet pads. And I go to the fourth one, the last one. The right rear. Blown seal. Wet pads. So one out of four brakes really was working. And the other ones were not they're just <laughs> i'm so lucky i checked this i guess i the moral of the story is um sometimes overkill is all right and don't trust when somebody says oh yeah the brakes were checked every year when we were done with it because you know what they do when they say they're checked what they mean is they pop the little little cap off the end of the, the grease cover here and they squirt some grease into that little Zerk fitting, and they say, we checked your brakes. They didn't check a damn thing. So I've learned more in the last 12 hours about trailer spindles and brakes than I have my entire life uh, before that. These particular type of spindles with the Zerk fitting on the end there are called Easy Lube. Dexter Easy Lube is the, the brand name for it. So. What happens, why those seals blow out in particular, is that uh, Dexter, if you look up the Dexter Easy Lube on YouTube, the demonstration on that, they say that you're supposed to jack the trailer up and spin the wheel while you're shooting the grease in it, not to use a, a powered grease gun, not an air-powered one, but just to use a manual one, so that the grease goes in slowly and you're spinning it so that the grease can repack the entire bearing. So, Because what happens here is the grease comes in the Zerk, travels down a channel down in the center, and then it comes out only right here. It's not like it goes throughout the entire bearing. So if you just have the wheel sitting still and the bearings aren't moving, it just all comes out here, and it's going to take the path of least resistance, and it's going to, instead of going forward, the intent is that it repacks this bearing, the main bearing that sits back here, moves forward through the spindle, and then repacks the, I don't know what they call it, the other bearing, the smaller bearing on the front, and then it pushes the old grease out and you get this like 
little knob of grease coming out and you can see when you get the new stuff in because it's clean grease but if you don't spin the wheel and have it rotating while you're pumping the grease in there it's all going to just pack in to one place and it can actually push backwards and blow out the seal going back and that's exactly what happened it didn't happen on this spindle this is the only one that it actually didn't happen on but i did put the new uh, brake shoes on there um it, this is the first one that i took off that i noticed what happened look at the difference here look at all that grease and grime and gunk that's been built up in there and i mean those those brakes weren't doing any work at all the entirety of the braking that was happening on this trailer was i would say 90 percent of it was happening only on that drum there and you should have seen that drum it was all scored up i hope i got video of that but anyways yeah i have to replace uh all four of these brake shoes because that one was ground down and these are just flat out greased up and aren't ever going to work again. I'm getting the drums turned as well so that I'm working with brand new surfaces to properly wear in the, the shoes. But just want to let you know that's what happens. Make sure you spin your wheels while you're, if you're using these easy lubes and also um, don't use a powered air grease gun while you're doing it just use a manual one so it pumps in the grease a lot more slowly yesterday i got the drums turned down so they all should be in good shape they've got a uh, brand new finish really nicely done no more scoring pitting greasy shiny polishedness in any of them so Next step is to clean them out really thoroughly, get all the, uh, the grinding dust and grease off. There's a couple greasy fingerprints here and there. Those have to be removed, and um, look at all that grit in there. That's all going to get gone, and then we'll move on to getting the bearings refitted in there, and um, I already have them repacked. I did the hand packing method, so they're all packed nice and thoroughly. And uh, hopefully, once these are cleaned out, we should be good to drop the bearings in and replace those seals. And now we have as clean as they're going to get, as good and as new as they're ever going to get ever again, brake drums. I have them in the same order that they were before. This is the only one that was working at the time. And uh, these other four, or other three, sorry, were uh, polished to a mirror finish in there. But now they've all been turned, and uh, we'll see if we can figure out how to get the bearings in. These bearings I hand-packed. I figured if it was good enough for Rich at DeBoss, uh, DeBoss Garage, it's good enough for me. You can see how it fits on that, uh, there's a taper on the race that fits this bearing in, so they only go in one way. All right, that goes in there, and I've got these brand new grease seals back here. I have to fetch a piece of wood. Woof, woof. And get that pounded down on there. Definitely a two-hand job. I just found a little piece of wood that worked. Fit in real nicely. All four seals, bearings and seals have been installed. A piece of wood worked out really slick. Here's what the uh, spindle looks like now before the installation. I've been trying to figure out where that, um, how the grease gets in here. So if you look down here, that bearing, that forward face of the bearing that's facing up right now, First of all, the seal is going to go over this lip and sit somewhere in here. And then that top part of that bearing is going to seat up against this ridge right here. And then the grease is going to try to come in also from that front ridge. But since it's going to be tight from the back all the way up, what they're trying to do, I think, is to get it to shoot out the end here, actually, out of this little hole. It's kind of a bad design, if you ask me, because the first thing it's going to encounter is this seal. It's gonna, so it's going to come up between a rock and a hard place, and it's going to 
<laughs> it's actually kind of not a rock. It's more of a, a soft rubber gasket in a hard place, and it's going to blow out that rubber seal. I've been watching a lot of videos in the last couple of days, and they say that these Easy Lube Zerks are only for emergency use. Now, how the hell many people do you think are actually going to take that to heart? That, like, nobody, right? I mean, emergency use only. When are you going to use these things? Are you going to be on the road and your bearings seize up and you say, oh, well, I have a Zerk fitting on there. This is an emergency. I'm going to squirt oil and, or grease in there. No. You know what they do? Here's, you got to listen to how to interpret what people say. When somebody that you're buying an RV from says, oh yeah, we had the bearing serviced every year, what they actually mean is we paid some dude $200 to go to each one of these hubs, pop off the little rubber gasket, give this thing some squirts without even jacking it up off the ground and spinning the wheel like you're supposed to do, and we blew out the seals. That's what they mean when they say we had the bearing serviced every year. So you really got to listen to what people say and think about what, how they're interpreting it. To be fair, the guy that we bought this thing from was absolutely mechanically clueless. So I don't blame him. I do blame the RV um, storage place that where they had this thing parked and uh, also did the service on it because that's, that's just unacceptable what they did. And that's the first um, drum back on. The next step is to put the outer bearing in and that raceway goes, it's got to taper out, obviously. And I have these bearings pre-packed as well. As much grease as I can get in them. You see the taper on there? The taper goes into the mating taper on the other side. Looks like a little piece of schmutz in there I gotta get out. All right, the gunk is removed. Now, the next one is the washer. Looks like that was the nut side. That's the bearing uh, side. I don't suppose it matters very much. It's just got to push up against there and keep it on. But if I don't check it, I'll screw it up. That is my way. All right, pop the castle nut on. How do you suppose I call it a castle nut? Now, the theory is you tighten it down until it's tight. Give her hub a spin. Hear that grinding? I'm gonna back it up. No, we're not. <clears throat> I gotta get a wrench. This is gonna be a beast to do one-handed, but I snugged that thing down with a wrench. And it spins freely, but not quite as freely as you want. So they're not actually supposed to be snug. Like, it's snug right now, but I'm going to just crack it loose a little bit and back it off so that this next little castle, part of the castle nut, is in line with the hole. See that hole right there? That's the first, but it's still finger tight. See, it's not any tighter than that. Now I can stick the cotter pin through there, and that's the proper amount of tightness that we're looking for. Can't do that one added. Okay, now this is got the cotter pin in. It's spinning free enough. There's a little bit of drag from those new pad, uh, shoes in there, so I'm okay with that. I'm hoping it's just the shoes that are grinding. I reused the bearings because they seemed in really good shape. I didn't see any reason to replace them. May as well go a whole hog with this. This is the cap for it that if you want to service the Zerk for any reason in an emergency situation only obviously you got to pop off this little rubber cap and then access the Zerk fitting but put the cap back on you buy yourself a special tool no you don't you put it on like that you take the same piece of wood that you use to pound your bearings in you stick it on there and you try to get it going flush that's what you do this is 15 seconds later. Voila! Wash, rinse, and repeat three more times. Just finished torquing down the last wheel, and uh, job hopefully is done. 
I wouldn't say hopefully because there's always something I find that I've missed. And I usually have to do it twice. What was the total cost of this? Um, first, for reference, the guy up at Halet RV said that they charge about a thousand to twelve hundred bucks for a job such as this. I paid, I believe, four hundred and forty for the brakes and sixty-five for the uh, turning, and about ten bucks for the seals. Oh God, just over 500 bucks in parts and uh, machine work. So if I save 700 bucks, then it's a job worth doing. You gotta decide that on your own, whether it's worth it to you. But if you have the tools already and you wanna spend some time in your own shop, like I usually am looking to do, this is a very good excuse to be able to spend some time out there doing that. It was rewarding. I mean, it's it's fun just thinking around out in the shop and putting all your tools to, to use. So you got to count that in there at some point as well.